Hey what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, The Exorcism of Molly Hartley. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie opens with Father Barrow getting prepared for an exorcism in a spooky house. Another priest joins him and leads him upstairs to a room where a pregnant woman needs to be exorcised. Inside the room, demonic voices can be heard and Father James is already at work. As Barrow enters the room, he notices photographs of the possessed woman's family on a wall. Father James is in the middle of the exorcism, and the woman is covered in wounds and completely possessed. The demon inside the woman is struggling to break free, making strange sounds. Father James warns Barrow that the expulsion state is about to occur, and he needs to prepare himself. Suddenly, the demon speaks to Barrow in the woman's voice, begging for help. The demon claims that the woman is about to give birth and implores Barrow to untie her. Initially hesitant because he knows the wound is possessed, Barrow is eventually manipulated by the demon and ends up freeing the woman's legs. Tragically, the demon takes advantage of the situation and attacks Barrow, causing Father James and the woman to fall out of the window and die. Barrow is shattered by what happened and feels responsible for the three lives lost. He is later taken to a Catholic mental asylum, where a chaplain pays him a visit. He then hands Barrow a notice that the Vatican has revoked his status as a priest. He also lets him know that he is retiring soon and invites Barrow to attend his final church ceremony. In the meantime, a girl named Molly Hartley is having a blast celebrating her 24th birthday with her friends. She's also thrilled to have become a partner at the same firm where she used to work. Later, the girls find Molly in the bathroom. The trio starts making out passionately on the dance floor, despite her friend's insistence that Molly go home. Molly decides to stay behind and indulge in some more fun. The next morning, Molly is rudely awakened by a loud knock on the door, and two police officers are standing outside. They were called in by a neighbor who had complained about excessive noise. After Molly explains that she was celebrating her birthday, the officers begin searching her home. Eventually, they discover the lifeless bodies of the two people she had spent the night with. She's immediately taken into custody and interrogated. During the interrogation, Molly claims she's innocent and then starts hearing strange voices. Suddenly, her nose starts bleeding, and she speaks in a demonic voice, claiming that we are here, meaning the demons. The next thing we see is Molly being transported to a Catholic mental asylum. At the same time, Barrow and the chaplain are praying at a church. The chaplain reveals that after he retires, he plans to teach at a local seminary, and invites Barrow to join him. As the chaplain exits the church, Barrow notices the cross on the wall has turned upside down, which gives him a fright. At the asylum, the demon inside Molly calls the front desk lady by her full name in a demonic voice. Her eyes turn white and she hears terrifying sounds. She tries to compose herself when a guard calls her, but her cup of tea suddenly explodes, and she orders the guards to take Molly away. As Molly is escorted to her cell, all the other prisoners in the hallway start behaving in an odd manner, adding to the creepiness of the situation. At night, Molly hears scratching and grunting noises in her cell. Suddenly, she hears someone calling her from the drain hole, so she leans in to listen to the voices. In a creepy, demonic voice, she says, we're getting stronger. Later, we see Molly sleeping when an insect crawls out of the drain and into her nose. She wakes up in a panic, and strange things start happening to her. She hears voices that get louder and more menacing. The next day, a doctor named Lori visits her in her cell and says she'll be checking on her several times a week. Lori wants to help her through counseling, but Molly insists she's not crazy, just possessed. She tells Lori she has no idea what she's dealing with. Suddenly, Lori's file flies off the desk, pages scattering everywhere. Molly tells Lori about her previous counselor, who died under mysterious circumstances after they left the occult. Lori checks Molly's past records and finds out her boyfriend and counselor had ties to the occult and died in a double suicide shortly after Molly escaped. Meanwhile, the front desk lady is reading prayers with a prayer card in hand, while Molly sits in her cell. Suddenly, the card catches fire, and the lady starts to panic, blaming Molly for bringing evil spirits. When the guard goes to check on Molly, she stares at him with an eerie intensity. The next day, Lori tries to get Molly to open up about the occult, but Molly just roars like a wild goose and vomits on her, claiming her master says hello. The scene then shifts to Barrow reading prayers in the church, Molly gets angry and demands he stop, and she starts banging her head against the wall. Other patients in the hospital start doing the same thing. Finally, Lori tries to intervene, but Molly has already injured herself. They take her away, and we see a flock of ravens outside the hospital. 
Molly growls in a strange and unsettling way, and the mystery of her possession deepens. As soon as Barrow hears Molly's voice, he rushes to the door and sees her leaving, staring at him with a disturbed expression. He quickly alerts the authorities and gets Molly shifted to a safe room where she can receive the care she needs. Meanwhile, Lori arrives to talk to Molly and understand the situation. She says that Molly was possessed by the devil on her 18th birthday. She explains that Molly's possession was the first phase of a larger plan and that she would be the one to bring Satan back to this mortal world. Lori is taken aback by her story and asks her if all of it is true. Molly nods and explains that she sees her possession as something like a pregnancy that will come to term in her 24th year. When Lori asks her why the possession would need to incubate for six years, six months, and six days, Molly explains that these are symbolic numbers in the Bible and that they hold special significance for the forces of evil. Lori realizes that the countdown to Molly's possession is nearly complete, and as they talk, Molly suddenly starts to convulse and mutter incoherently. Lori tries to help her, but it's no use. Then, just as suddenly, she stops and faints, whispering something about him coming. As Lori looks on in confusion, she notices that the glass on her watch is shattered, and the hands are frozen at 7-6. She takes the watch off and tries to make sense of what's happening, but she's interrupted by the sound of a raven crashing into the window. Meanwhile, Barrow is on his way to his cell after praying when he hears Molly's voice calling out to him. He rushes to her room where she begs him for help. The Bible falls from his hand and he sees that his watch is also stuck at 7-6. Feeling helpless and confused, Barrow picks up the Bible and leaves the room. As he goes, Molly starts to laugh maniacally, sending chills down his spine. The next morning, Lori visits Molly's room and finds her hanging upside down from the ceiling. Horrified, Lori calls for help, but as she does, Molly opens her eyes, and Lori is thrown backward, as if by an unseen force. Panicked, Lori screams for help, and two guards rush in to restrain Molly and tie her to the bed. As they do, they hear a voice speaking in tongues, warning them that he is coming. Meanwhile, Barrow is struggling with his own doubts and fears. When Lori approaches him for help, he's hesitant to get involved, unsure if he still has the power to perform an exorcism. But Lori is persistent and explains that there are two types of exorcism, solemn and unofficial. A solemn exorcism requires the approval of the church, but an unofficial one can be performed by a layperson. As Barrow considers her words, he realizes that he may be Molly's last hope. With a deep breath, he agrees to help, setting in motion a dangerous and unpredictable battle between good and evil. After facing multiple lawsuits and negative media attention, the Roman Catholic Church has ceased its teachings on exorcisms. The result of this is that there are only 17 trained exorcists in America, and even fewer have had any real-life experience with exorcisms. Lori, in a hurry, informs Barrow that time is of the essence and that she will help him get out of the situation. However, upon observing a group of deceased ravens, Lori shares that this phenomenon occurred the previous evening at exactly 7.6 p.m., with all clocks freezing at that moment. Suddenly, the front desk lady appears outside the window, screaming that he has arrived and that his time has come, before plummeting to her death, leaving Beryl and Lori in a state of anguish. Beryl later converses with Molly, who is entirely under the control of the demon, and when Beryl requests to see Molly, the demon tries to taunt him and ridicule the Bible. Although Molly regains her senses for a brief moment and implores Beryl for help, the demon quickly interrupts with a callous laugh. Nonetheless, Beryl remains determined to aid Molly, and as he begins the exorcism, the demon screams, causing Beryl to retreat momentarily. The next day, Barrow shares everything with the chaplain, who attentively listens and encourages him to continue aiding Molly. The chaplain provides Barrow with his clerical attire and the necessary tools to conduct the exorcism. Barrow prepares himself by sprinkling holy water outside Molly's room before entering and dousing the area with holy water. Barrow begins reciting the ancient rites of exorcism, bravely standing up to the demon's attempts to seduce and distract him. The room is tense with dark energy as the demon takes on the guise of a heavily pregnant woman, but Barrow remains resolute, calling out the demon's deception. As the exorcism continues, Barrow attempts to place the cross on the demon's face, but the demon savagely bites off his hand. Undeterred, Barrow frees himself and notices strange symbols forming on Molly's forehead before disappearing. After tending to his wounds, Barrow returns to Molly's room, only to face an even more powerful demon. The demon throws Molly's belongings and chokes Barrow, trying to uproot the bed. But Barrow fights back with the power of the cross, and the demon retreats. 
Encouraged by Lori, Barrow returns to face the demon again. This time, the demon reveals that today is the anniversary of impregnating Molly with his spirit. Barrow shows the demon the crosses, but the demon quotes Bible verses instead. Undeterred, Barrow casts the demon out of Molly by the power of Christ, sending it into the swine. The demon becomes more powerful, and bugs start coming out of its mouth, going into a box filled with holy water. With Molly finally free from the demon's grip, Barrow closes the box and places it in a container filled with holy water. Then, Barrow checks on Molly and helps her out of the room. To his relief, she appears to be back to her normal self. The following day, Barrow meets with Molly, who expresses her gratitude to him. On his way back, Barrow notices something odd. All the patients in the ward are staring at him. Molly also seems to be aware of this. After returning the container to the chaplain, Barrow notices that the chaplain seems to be quite interested in Satanism, as evidenced by a book on the subject that is lying on his table. Barrow becomes suspicious and starts leafing through the book, only to find that the letters on its cover match the symbols that appeared on Molly's forehead during the exorcism. The chaplain tries to explain that the book, called Leviathan, is just a work of fiction, but Barrow is not convinced. The chaplain tells him that the book talks about the birth of the Antichrist after the worst sin of matricide is committed on the mother of the devil, who is the person whose body was used to incubate the devil. Barrow realizes that this sounds too much like what happened to Molly and becomes increasingly worried. Barrow demands to see the Kalshan box, but upon opening the container, he finds that the box has been replaced with a large stone. The chaplain hits Barrow on the head, knocking him unconscious. Later, Barrow regains consciousness in a locked room inside the asylum. He overhears a patient in the adjacent room committing suicide, adding to the already high death toll. Suddenly, Lori arrives at the asylum, only to discover that the hospital is completely deserted, without any patients or staff. While Lori retrieves her phone, it rings, and an unidentified person warns her that he is coming. Meanwhile, a guard approaches Lori, but she realizes that he is behaving abnormally. In another part of the asylum, an orderly with a gun forces Barrow to accompany him to witness the ritual. The chaplain is getting ready for the ceremony in the lower level, where Molly was brought to be used as a sacrifice. A group of individuals from the satanic cult were also in attendance to observe the ritual. In another area, Lori is escorted by a guard to a ward, where she discovers that all the people there have passed away. The guard then attempts to harm her, but Lori defends herself by using scissors to stab him. Later on, Lori notices a guard escorting Barrow to an undisclosed location. Eventually, Barrow and the orderly arrive at an underground chamber, where the chaplain instructs him to bear witness to the ritual. The chaplain reveals that he's responsible for bringing the devil into the world, as he performed an unholy ceremony that gave birth to the devil. Before the chaplain can harm Molly during the ritual, Lori plunges her scissors into his stomach, causing him to drop the box and releasing insects. The insects provide a diversion that enables Molly to stab the chaplain, ultimately stopping the ritual. After Barrow and Molly escape the underground chamber, they make their way through a maze of dark corridors, trying to find their way out of the building. They hear the chaos of the insect attack in the distance, the sound of screams and buzzing filling the air. As they run, they see several cult members being killed by the swarm of insects, their bodies covered in bites and stings. Finally, they reach the entrance and burst through the door, gasping for fresh air. They see an ambulance waiting outside and rush toward it. Molly is loaded into the ambulance, and Barrow climbs in next to her, trying to comfort her. As the ambulance drives away, Barrow reassures Molly that she is safe now and the worst is behind them. She looks at him with gratitude, relieved to be alive. However, their relief is short-lived as they hear a loud buzzing sound coming from the direction of the building they just left. Meanwhile, inside the school bus, the outcast girl is sitting alone, looking out of the window at the passing scenery. Suddenly, she feels a tickling sensation on her ear and brushes her hand against it. She then sees an insect crawling on her hand, and she screams in terror as the screen fades to black. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.